Hello everyone, I'm Cheryl Clegorn and I'm here with my colleague Gary McDougall to present technical workshop on distributing workflow, distributed workflows in ArcGIS. So the session will focus on techniques for distributing your data and syncing with ArcGIS and it will take the form of discussions and demos focusing on the most recently added features. So we look at feature services, what has, what's new with feature services. We'll talk up, look at distributed collaborations, taking a map offline in ArcGIS Pro, collector for ArcGIS with map areas, and then we look at what's been added for GeoDatabase, namely GeoDatabase replication in ArcGIS Pro. And then we'll take a sneak peek at what's coming. To take advantage of the distributed workflows with feature services, you need to enable the sync capability on your feature service. You can enable the sync capability while you are publishing the service. So you will go to the feature properties and check the enable sync checkbox. You can also enable the capa sync capability after you've published your service. For hosted feature services, you will go to the items page and the feature layers section, you'll see the checkbox enable sync. And for ArcGIS server feature services, you will use server manager you will go to the operations section for that feature service and check the sync option. There are specific data requirements to be able to make use of the sync capability for feature services. If you are publishing hosted feature layers, then there's no need to worry. The data will be automatically configured for you as soon as you enable that sync option. For ArcGIS Server Feature Services, where you are responsible for managing your data, your data must be in an enterprise geodatabase, it must have global IDs, and the data registration type must be either versioned, non-versioned with archiving, or branch version. And to configure these to configure your data in the geodatabase, you will go to catalog, right-click on your data set, go to manage, and then you'll see the options to add global ID, registers, version, or enable archiving. Now, if you have relationship classes that you want to participate in sync capability, the primary key for these relationship classes cannot be based on the object ID field. So if you have any such relationship classes, you can actually use the migrate relationship classes geoprocessing tool, which will convert these relationship classes to have their primary keys based on the global ID. You can also configure your feature services to match your offline workflow. So for example, if you want your service to be used as reference data only, you can configure a download only sync enabled service. And you will, along with the sync option, you will check the query option that way it all the users can do is query and get updates from the server. You can also configure a subset of editing capabilities. So for example, you might have a workflow where out in the fields, users are only allowed to update existing features. They are not allowed to create new features or delete existing ones. In that case, you will, in addition to the sync and the query option, you will also check the update option. You can also limit what attributes can be edited out in the field. There might be workflows where you don't want the geometry to be updated at all. So for ArcGIS server feature services, you will set allow geometry updates to be equal to false. And for hosted feature layers, you will actually under the what kind of editing is allowed, you will take, take the option to update attributes only. You can also limit what fields are edited and you do this by configuring your map. Now, if your data has editor tracking, ownership-based control, ownership-based access control, etc., these will be honored while your data is offline in offline, sorry. With hosted feature layers, you can actually use hosted feature layer views to further configure the editing experience. So in addition to Honoring the properties that are set on your hosted feature layer, you can set attribute filters, which will actually define what features are available in the view. 
you can set field visibility which will filter out certain fields from being shown in your view and you can set an area of interest which is basically a spatial extent for the data. Collector for ArcGIS uses web maps and within that web map you can actually configure how you want data to be delivered to the device so data how the data is going to be downloaded. Now we know attachments can get large so you might not want to download attachments so you have the up opportunity here to say exactly whether or not you want attachments and features downloaded to this offline devices. You can configure them for both editable features and read-only features. Now let's talk about a bit of geodatabase enhancements, how they relate to feature services. We have now started supported sync with branch version data. This was introduced at ArcGIS 10.7 and this is only on the default version. Now the sync capability uses a simple features model to copy your data offline. So if you have advanced behaviors like utility networks, contingent values, attribute rules, etc., those will not be taken offline in your device. Even though they are not taken offline, you still have the benefits of these advanced behaviors when you perform a sync. So let's look at an example. So let's we have our feature service and there's a the data for the feature service is stored in a geodatabase and we've taken our data offline on our device. So let's say out in the fields we are performing edits and let's say we have updated as an attribute and we, we set A equal to 10 prime. Now we're ready to sync our data with the feature services. So the sync process is a two-part process. The first part of the sync is an upload. This will upload the A equal 10 prime to the feature service, which will then get written to your geodatabase. Now, if in the geodatabase you have a calculate rule that says set B equal to A, then B will get set to the value 10 prime. And on the second half of the sync, which is the download, that B equal 10 prime will be downloaded to your device. So you can see you're still getting the benefit of these advanced behaviors on your device. We are planning in the future to support these advanced behaviors and also supporting sync with name branch version. So our discussions and demos for feature services will be the following. We will go through distributed collaboration between ArcGIS Enterprise and ArcGIS Online. Then we look at taking a map offline in Pro and thirdly, we will look at Collector for ArcGIS as it relates to map areas. And then we'll be able to see how they all complement each other. So what is a distributed collaboration? This is a way to share and synchronize your data and information across ArcGIS. You can set up a collaboration between ArcGIS Enterprise and ArcGIS Online or between two ArcGIS Enterprise sites. Now you have the ability to actually keep the data updates automatically synced during the collaboration. Distributed collaboration supports a one-way sync only model and the data is always copied at the full extent. Edits are synced from any feature services with sync capability that's shared in, via the collaboration. The edits will be synced to a read-only hosted feature layer. So let's take a closer look at what happens when you set up a distributed collaboration. When you are creating a distributed collaboration, you need to create workspaces in your sites. Then you will assign groups to these workspaces. And now anything you share with the group will be candidate to participate in the collaboration. So let's say we have a sync enable feature service that we have assigned to this group that's in the workspace. This will actually generate a mobile geodatabase and, and register a replica in our ArcGIS enterprise. And then this mobile geodatabase will be uploaded to ArcGIS Online and a hosted feature layer will be created and the replica registered. So now we have a replica pair and any updates that occur in ArcGIS enterprise can now be synced with ArcGIS Online. 
So Gary, how about the demonstration on distributed collaboration? Thanks, Cheryl. Okay, so what I have here is a, uh, I'm a Zelle machine that's running ArcGIS Enterprise. I also have ArcGIS Pro running on the same machine and an enterprise geo database running SQL Server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish my enterprise geo database data as a feature service to my enterprise, and then I'm going to have it uh, participate in the collaboration, copy the data up to online, and then have that a hosted feature service generated and keep that in sync through collaboration. So to start, I need to publish. So the first thing I did is I configured my data to be uh, able to sync. And to do that, you right click, you say uh, manage and enable archiving, which I've already done. And also you want to run add global IDs, which has already been run in this data as well. Then you drop the data into Pro and you set up your symbology. In this case, I want to do a hydrant demo. So I'm uh, going through a scenario where I've got guys doing hydrant inspections in the field. I want them to collect the information, update my data in my enterprise geo database, then have that made available through collaboration in, in a hosted feature layer and online automatically with updates so that consumers uh, external to my organization can see the information. So to start, um, I set up my symbology. I've got three different types of symbols. I have completed inspections, assigned inspections, and unassigned inspections. And you can see that I'm you know, working my way from, from uh, east to west across the map with the inspection program. So to publish, I choose Share in Pro, then I choose Web Layer, and this will bring up the publishing UI. Then I give it uh, summary and tags, and then I want to choose Feature because I want to pu publish a feature service. Next, I go to Configuration, and I can configure additional options on my feature service. So if I click Edit here, I can set it up to be update only, meaning I don't want the guys in the field actually moving these features around. I just want them to update uh, attributes of the feature. So I'm going to choose update only and I'm also going to choose allow geometry updates false, meaning all I can do is attribute update. And then I'm also going to enable sync because that'll, that'll allow me to have a copy here and a copy up in online and have the two of them keep in sync. So with that set up, I would click analyze and then publish and it would publish my service. Now I've already gone ahead and published, so let's take a look at the enterprise. So here I have my ArcGIS enterprise and I also have a connection to my a feature service team organization in ArcGIS Online. And I'm going to set up a collaboration between the two. So let's go to the Contents tab, and you'll see that this Hydrant's demo uh, feature layer uh, is already published here, so you see it listed. So I'm going to want to have that uh, participate in the collaboration. So the first thing I need to do is set up the collaboration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little side-by-side -side thing here, where I'm going to put my Enterprise on the left. It's the daily, um, it's called daily, is the name of daily2 is the name of the enterprise and have my FS team ArcGIS online organization on the right. Uh, and in both cases, I'm connected as an administrator. So the first thing I need to do is go to my uh, organization and then go into my uh, settings. And I need to do that in both the enterprise and online. And if you scroll down, you'll see there's a collaborations uh, tab. So you want to click that on both sides. Now you'll see I've already set up a collaboration which we're going to use for the demo, but to show you how I set that up, I'll walk you through the steps. The first thing to know is that when you set up a collaboration between ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise, the ArcGIS Online organization needs to be the host. So I need to start there. It's going to click Create Collaboration, and then it's going to ask me to give a name. So I'm going to call it, you know, Test Collab. And I can give it a description and hit Next and give it a workspace name. This is going to be the workspace that Cheryl was showing in one of her diagrams. This is the basically uh, a, an object that contain, that references a group that specifies a set of uh, items that you want to share. So I'm going to call this one also test collab. And I'll just copy that because I'll need it one more time for my group name. So every workspace has an associated group. I can either create a new one on the fly or have an existing one referenced. In this case, I'm going to create a new one on the fly. And I hit Next. Sorry, right, didn't give it a tag. Hit Next. Now I get to choose. Do I want items shared in this collaboration to be references, meaning that I'll just have a reference back to the service running on the, on the, on the other side of the collaboration, or do I want actual copies made and then each, each organization uh, running their own, having their own copy? In this case, we want copies. So I'm going to choose Copies and I'll click Save and Invite. So what this will do 
is it'll ask me to clarify which organization I want to invite. So I've got to give it the URL of the organization, which is going to be my enterprise. So I'll copy that and paste it here. Uh, next, uh, I want to figure. I need to tell it how I want to. How do I want to send the data? Collaboration, when it's uh, in copy mode, uh, allows you to send data in one direction, either from the receiver to the sender or the sender to receiver. So in this case, I want to send uh, my guest organization, which is going to be my enterprise. I want it to send content to sync content up to my uh, to my online organization. So I'm going to choose send content, and I'm going to click save invitation. And what that's going to do is it's going to save a file, which will be placed in the output folder here. And it's basically an invitation file that, that I can then send to the enterprise. On the enterprise side, I can click accept invitation and then browse to that file, which is in that same folder. And click on the invite file. And then click accept invitation. So this now uh, hooks me up with the online organization. Now to tell the online organization that I've accepted its invitation, I had click save response and that'll actually save a file to that same location. So I'm going to come back to my online organization here on the right. I can then, um, sorry, um, I can then accept the invitation. So I can browse and click the response and accept the guest organization. So with that done, I've now established a collaboration between enterprise and online, my test collab um, collaboration. So the next step is the guest gets to choose which of the workspaces, and there can be more than one. In this case, there's just one, but there can be more than one. Which of the workspaces do I want to participate in? So in this case, I want to join this particular workspace. And I need to get, here's where I give it the name of the group on the enterprise side for which I want to share content. So I'll give it the same name, I'll call it Test Collab. And again, specify that I want to do copies, not references. And then I can tell it how often I want to keep the data synchronized. So in this case, I'm going to choose the default, which is every hour. And I'm going to join the workspace. So once that's done, I've successfully set up my collaboration and successfully configured a workspace to share content. OK, so, so in order to share the content, uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to go to my groups. So if I go to my groups, and I'll do that also on the online side, you'll see there, there's a, a new test collab group that's established. So what I can do is, because I want to send content from my enterprise to my online, which is how I set up the collaboration, I can add content to this test collab group, and then it'll automatically be copied to online. Now, I've already done that for this collab group that I set up earlier, so let's take a look at that. So if I go in there, you'll see that it'll contain the Hydrant Demo feature service that I had um, published earlier. And if we go in online to that same corresponding group, you'll see that that same uh, service exists there. All right, so I'm going to open up these maps. And you'll see it's the same data, just two different copies. One's a host feature service uh, running in online, and one is a uh, feature service referencing my enterprise geodatabase data uh, on the enterprise side. All right, so say I go in and I make an edit. So let's just zoom in here and just make an edit. I'm going to click on this feature, and I'll click Edit. And I'll just change it to be you know, um, uh, completed. And that'll change the color. Should change the color. Let me try it again. I'll change it to unassigned. Okay, that changes the color to blue. Okay, so I can go ahead and make more edits. People can be collecting inspections in the field. These colors will be changing. Information will be collected. So now what I want to do is I want to be able to take that change and synchronize it to my ArcGIS online side. And as you remember from when I set up the collaboration, every hour that's going to happen automatically. But I can also force it to happen. So I can go to my content, sorry, organization, go back to that collaboration tab, go to settings, and then collaboration. And then click on my, on my collaboration, um, collab item, and then click Sync Workspace. So I can force it to happen right away. And you have to do this from the guest side. 
So I'm gonna click Sync Workspace and that'll kick off a sync process. So it's now in the process of syncing. I can always come in here at any time and take a look at my sync history so I could see that it last synced, you know, when it last synced, when it's gonna sync next and all that sort of thing. Now on the online side, we wanna see that update. So let me come in here let me set a refresh interval so that we'll see the map kind of auto refresh and you'll see that feature become blue when the synchronization is complete. So you'll start to see the screen flashing and you can see the sync is already complete. There's that blue feature. So um, that synchronized the edits up to my online account, to my online hosted feature service. And that, in that way, through collaboration, I can keep the two copies updated. And with that, I'll send things back to Cheryl. Thank you, Gary. Okay, so now we will look at downloading maps with ArcGIS Pro. So at ArcGIS Pro 2.1, we added commands to take feature layers offline. And once you are offline, you can disconnect from the network. You can go, you can make your edits, and then come back online later on and synchronize your edits. This workflow supports multiple bi-directional syncs. So you don't have to complete all your edits in one shot. You can actually plan them in phases and synchronize the edits as you go along. The this download map in ArcGIS Pro uses the same sync capabilities as distributed collaboration and as you'll see in Collector. While you are offline, the data is stored in a mobile geo database. And then once you have finished using your offline map, you can just click remove from in the group of buttons. And this will actually switch your map to reference your live online feature service once more. So I'll let Gary take us through a demo of taking the maps offline in Pro. Thanks, Cheryl. OK, so uh, back on the same machine again and back in Pro again. The last time, in the last demo, I had published my enterprise geodatabase data. So I'm connected to an enterprise geodatabase. And then we set it up to the service that was generated to be used in collaboration. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to access, use Pro as a client to access that service. So I'm going to shut down these, the sharing UI and close this map. And I'm going to go in my catalog pane to the portal tab. And you'll see the Hydrant demo uh, service that we were using in the last demo is, is here. So I can um, right click on it and I can say add to, new, add to new map. It's a little slow in this remote desktop session. I'll just give it a minute. Try it again. Okay. Right click. Sorry, it's just a bit slow. Okay. Add to new map. And so now I'm adding my feature service data to a new map. So it's the same data again. You'll see the edit that we made in the previous demo. And then what I can do is I can zoom into a certain location that I want to take offline and actually use Pro as an offline editor. So You'll see that I'm connected to, you know, my enterprise, enterprise, ArcGIS Enterprise Daily 2 here. And you can tell from this properties that I'm actually looking at the URL to the feature service. So what I want to do is I want to go to my map command and click this download map button. And what this will do is it'll download the contents of my service at this location. So it's going to get an envelope that is the extent of the map, get all the features within that envelope, take them offline, put them in a mobile geodatabase, and download them to the to Pro, and then uh, switch the reference of my layer to reference that mobile geodatabase. So that's completed now. If we go to the source, you can see that it's a mobile geodatabase now that we're referencing. And if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that I only get the features that were within that extent. So now I can go ahead and I can make edits. So I can select the feature. I can click on attributes. I can change its you know, inspection to be completed. I can even add an attachment and so forth. And apply those changes. And I can keep making edits as I go. So you can see that this feature is now red because I completed the completed. So I can spend the day going out collecting, uh, doing inspections and, and, uh, and when I'm finished, I can come in and I can synchronize. So notice that when the map's offline, the sync and remove commands are enabled. That's because it's now in a mode where I can sync it. So I'm going to click the sync button. 
and that'll upload the edits that I just made in the, uh, in the map to my enterprise. So that will include uh, that attachment and that update to the feature. So if I go to my map, my enterprise map, and I refresh it, and I click on it, you'll see that it has the attachment that I made and the, and the, um, and the edit because it changed color. That also goes for any changes that you make uh, in the actual feature service on the enterprise side. So I can come in here and I can, you know, I'll change this one to completed. And so any edits that I'm making, maybe other editors are also uploading and syncing into my data. I can, I'll get that on download uh, also from, from Pro. So let me come back to Pro, click sync again. Not only does it upload any edits, it also downloads anything that happened since the last synchronization. So, you know, this feature down here becomes red because now I've, I've got the latest. When I'm done, I just come over here and click remove. Uh, I can sync one more time if I have edits to sync, but in this case I don't, so I'm going to say no. And what it'll do is it'll remove that local mobile geo database and switch my reference map back to the service. So if I zoom out, you know, now I got all the access to all the data. If I right click and go properties on the layer, you'll see it now it's back referencing the URL. And with that, I'll hand things back to Cheryl. Pretty cool, Gary. Okay, so now we will look at Collector for ArcGIS. So the newest version of Collector has some nice features. There's a, there are some new editing user experience where you can actually get very in. You can get deep into the uh, zoom in and get your coordinates precise. You can also edit multiple attributes at the same time, and then you can. Also, with this version of Collector, you have the ability to sync your map while it's open. And you can also schedule syncs to occur on a regular basis. Collector for ArcGIS also offers two workflows. There's the on-demand workflow and the pre-planned workflow. With the on-demand workflow, the map author will enable and configure the map for offline use. And then when a field worker is ready to use this map, they will actually come in and define the area they are interested in. At that point, the server will process the data for that user and download it to the mobile device. In the pre-planned workflow, the map author defines specific map areas for offline use. At this point, when he's defining these map areas, the server will process the data for each of these map areas. So when a field worker is ready to use one of these map areas, they will come in, look at the list of available map areas, select the one they want, and that will simply be copied to their device. There's no more processing of data on the server at this point. So you configure the map areas while you are authoring the map, and you will go to the web map settings, select the offline tab, then go to map areas, manage areas, then you'll see the options to define your spatial extent, your level of details. You can also schedule how often you want updates to occur for these map areas. So let's look at, take a closer look at map areas. When you define a map area, this generates a mobile geo database and registers a replica on the server. It also generates a base map to go along with that mobile geo database. When an offline user comes and wants to take this map area offline, they will get a copy of the mobile geo database and the map, the base map. Now, this mobile geo database currently references this existing replica because they are going to be doing edits out in the field they need to actually register the, another replica using the existing one as a reference. So now they have their own replica that's distinct from the replica under that service, service in the map area. And they are now able to go out in the fields, perform their edits, and sync edits with the feature service via their unique replica. So now Gary will take us through a demonstration of Collector for ArcGIS with map areas. Thanks, Cheryl. OK, so I'm back here in my enterprise daily two. And you'll see in, in the under my contents, I'll ha I have a map called Naperville. So if we open that web map, you'll see that I created it with the hydrant demo layer that we've been using all along. 
and three new feature surface layers, a notes, points, lines, and areas. This is basically redlining layers. So I can you know, do some redlining in the field. And then I have my world street map base map. In this web map, after I created it, I went into settings and I went down here to the offline section. If all your data is configured for offline mode, you can go into this section and set up your map areas. So I'm gonna click map areas. And you'll see that I've got you know, one map area already established here in this country club area that we've been doing edits all along. Um, and to show you how that's done, I'm gonna create another one. So I'm gonna scroll to the right here and I'm going to click on this uh, draw map area button. Now, this is 10.7.1 and 10.8. We actually have a command that'll let you create polygons, not just envelopes. But for this, uh, for this demo, I'll just create a simple envelope. So I create the envelope. I can then choose, you know, the name. I'm gonna call it, you know, West Side. And then I'm gonna make, I can cho choose the resolution. So since this is, this is just a demo, I'm gonna make it really coarse, coarse resolution. Can also, choose how often I want the package to update. Because this is going to be cached, I need it to be refresh every so often to get the latest changes. And I'll go with the default of uh, every Sunday at 9.36 p.m. So I click Save. And what that's going to do is it's going to package up the content uh, uh, in, in the services and in the base map and create this, this map area. So while that's packaging, let's just take a look at what's in there. So I'm going to click on the one that we've already created. And you'll see that it has three different three different items. It has the Hydrant Demo uh, mobile geodatabase already prepackaged, ready to download. It has my Notes mobile geodatabase, which references my Notes feature service, also ready to download. And it has my World Street Maps base map, which is also ready to download. In each one of these, notice there's a sync button. So I could at any time click them to have them update manually. Or I can just wait for the next time the synchronization happens uh, automatically. So if I have edits, I really want to get into these, these, um, these packaged maps to download, I can, I can do it on the fly. So let me come back here, and you'll see that this uh, west side one is still, still chugging. You see it's, it's generated notes already, and still going here. It should get the, uh, the other two in a second here, and we'll see that it, that'll be completed. So there it completes, and you'll see for some reason, it's a refresh issue, but it'll, it should see, you should list all three. They're actually all three there. It's just a refresh issue on the UI. All right, so let's see how what that looks like uh, in Collector. So let's switch over to three and work on Collector. Okay, so I'm going to log into my Collector. And you'll see that I've, sorry, I'll log into my iPad. And you'll see that I have Collector, Classic, and, and uh, the, the most recent version of Collector. So I'm going to use the most recent of collect, version of Collector for this demo. So I'll click on it. And you'll see I'm already connected to my enterprise. Just like in Pro that I used as a client, I'm now using Collector as a client to edit the same feature service. So one thing to show you that's relatively new with Collector is the ability to log in via uh, QR code. So I'm already logged in, but what I'll do is I'll sign out of my enterprise, and then I'll choose to sign back into my enterprise. And I can either type in the URL, which is kind of a pain on the iPad, or I can choose to scan a code. So what I did is I went, went online and found a QR code um, generator, and I set up a QR code for the URL that references my service, and I can then scan it, right here, it captures it, and it'll automatically go to that URL. So I don't have to type in that URL at all. So now let me log in as my user. And I'm connected. So there's my Naperville uh, map that we were looking at that has the map areas. And let me open that guy up. So this is going to search and find the map areas. It'll find the two that are generated, the west side one that I, I created earlier, and this uh, Naperville map, map area that I've, uh, that's in the Country Club location. So I'm going to click the Download button on that, and it's just going to download that, that uh, map area. So it's really quick, because it, all it's doing is it's downloading the prepackaged maps and the base maps, and I'm ready to go. So we'll open that guy up, and you know that it's that it is a subset because all I have is whatever was in that location that I defined for the map area. So one thing I can do is go in and so I'm click over here, click on one of my 
hydrant so that I can do an inspection. I'm gonna click edit. You know, I'm gonna set it to be um, completed. And maybe I'll set the, you know, location to be country club. And I'll submit that guy. And I can also take a photo and attach it. So something that's really cool with Collector is that rather than having to do that one at a time, I can actually click in here and say multiple, edit multiple. And I can click on a couple of these. And then I can say, you know, continue. And then I can at once, you know, set the attributes of them. And I can also choose the location. So, you know, it's already set to country club. Uh, but had there been a, uh, a different thing here, let me see if I can make this work. Um, I can choose recent values and pick country club. So rather than have to type it in, if I'm typing it in over and over for the same attribute, collector will actually cache it and see if it, save it in their recent values list. And I can just pick it instead of having to type it. So I'll click done and I'll submit that guy. And it's good to go. So the next thing I want to do is maybe I want to, you know, this one's damaged perhaps, and I want to highlight the area around it that's been damaged, be, damaged uh, as well. So I can do is I can, you know, click here, drop a point, and I can say collect here. And I can go in and I can, you know, uh, draw a polygon. Now notice how nice this, this experience is. I can simply drag. Now notice one other thing. See, as I get closer to that hydrant, it snaps. So snapping is also something that's relatively new in Collector. So I have that ability now to actually get really precise with my editing, and including snapping. All right, I'll submit that. And I'm, and I'm ready to go. So say I'm done with my edits for the day and I'm ready to, I'm ready to synchronize. What I can new, do now is click the sync button right from the map. And I can preview all the edits I just made and make adjustments if I want. I can click them and it highlights them and I can go ahead and make changes. Uh, and I can also set up auto sync so that it automatically syncs for me every once in a while. But for this demo, I'm just gonna click the sync button and have it go ahead and sync. So it's gonna take these edits that I just made, upload them and apply them to my enterprise and, and store them there. Now, because this was packaged data uh, and that I created earlier, it, doesn't, it didn't have, when I downloaded it, the edits that I had done before, right? So this edit I have here, this blue, um, this blue marked hydrant, that was updated because of the of synchronization that happened and uh, downloaded to my, to my collector uh, without me having to do the edit because that original one I downloaded was a little bit stale. Okay, so all the edits are uploaded now. I can continue to make edits. I can also just remove the area and it'll switch it back to referencing the live data. And I can, you know, at another time, take it, take it offline. If I click back on my maps and I go into my settings, you'll see there's a few more things you can do. So, you know, you can set up your GPS accuracy settings and set up the photo size if you want it to be larger, smaller. Smaller, I recommend, is, is better just for performance. Um, I can determine whether or not I have snapping turned on. Um, I can set, you know, download and sync options so that it'll only sync when I'm on the Wi-Fi or it'll auto sync automatically by default. Another thing that's really handy is troubleshooting. So if I click troubleshooting, I can actually turn on logging and then have logs get generated whenever I do uh, my synchronization. So if I, I hit some issues and getting some errors, I can collect logging information and then send it along um, uh, through text or something uh, to, to someone to take a look at. Okay, so let's put it back to, uh, to two, please, Cheryl. Okay, and let's take a look at my enterprise. Okay, let me zoom in, you can see those edits. I'll go back to the map. And you'll see those edits that I had been making in Collector are now visible in my map. So all those, those changes I had made along the way are, are in there now. Now what we can do is the final step is push all that up into online. That's the ultimate goal from a workflow. So if we take a look at online, you'll see that some of them have already synchronized. That's because we've rolled over and hit that auto sync moment. Uh, but I can again force a synchronization by going back to my organization and my settings. 
and collaborations. And then syncing my workspace. And so this, this will take those you know, edits I just made in Collector and also synchronize them over to ArcGIS Online uh, and to kind of finish the story uh, for the whole demo workflow that we were presenting today. So it takes a few seconds. The next one should, should show it. And there we are. And with that, I'll head things back to Cheryl. Great. Thank you, Gary. So there's another workflow with Collector that's called Pre-Planned Workflows with Scheduled Updates. And this is really for read-only workflows. So as we saw before, when you create a map area, it generates a mobile geodatabase and registers a replica. It also generates a base map. So if a mobile user comes and wants to take that map area offline, they will get a copy of the mobile geodatabase and the base map with the replica associated to that map area. Now, they don't have to register uh, another replica because this is a read-only workflow. Really, they're using the exact replica that's associated with the map area. If a mo another mobile user comes along and wants to take the same map area offline, well, the same thing will happen. They will get exactly the same data that mobile user one got. As the name implies, there are scheduled updates that will occur on the server, so let's say data was updated on the feature service and it's now time for an update. When that update occurs, a Delta geodatabase will be generated and applied to that mobile geodatabase on the server. Also, we'll keep a copy of that mobile geodatabase on the server so that when uh, another user, uh, one of those mobile users want to refresh their map area, let's say user one, he simply gets the copy of the cached Delta geodatabase from the server, and then that's applied to the replica geodatabase on the mobile device. If another schedule update occurs, then a second Delta is generated and applied to the replica geodatabase, and that Delta is also cached on the server. So if now user 2 wants to refresh his map area, he will get the Two copies of those, the copies of those two Delta geodatabases downloaded to his device and they will be applied to that replica geodatabase. Now, if a third user comes along at this point and wants to use this, the map area, well, she will get the most up-to-date information that's on the server. So in this case, the mobile geodatabase that has Delta, Deltas 1 and 2 applied to it will be downloaded to this mobile device along with the base map. And now that's the most up-to-date copy of the information. Now, as we can see, the deltas over time can accumulate on the server. Because this is a read-only workflow, we can actually afford to remove these deltas from on the server. If by chance there's a user out there that's out of sync with the map area, for example, user one here is out of sync when he comes to refresh his replica, well, the Delta 2 is no longer there, so he's out of date. He simply, what happens is that this, he, all that will happen is that the replica geodatabase on the mobile, geo, mobile device will be deleted, and then they just have to download a fresh copy of the mobile geodatabase with Deltas 1 and 2 associated with it on the, onto the device. Okay, just to recap the uh, feature services uh, workflows that we discussed, we looked at a distributed collaboration with, between ArcGIS Enterprise and ArcGIS Online. We looked at taking a map offline in Pro, and we looked at Collector for ArcGIS. And you can see if all of these workflows are using the same service on ArcGIS Enterprise, they will all benefit from each other's edits, as you saw in Gary's demonstrations. Okay, so switching gears, let's look at the geodatabase, new capabilities in the geodatabase. At ArcGIS Pro 2.5, we've added geodatabase replication. So this is the first release of ArcGIS Pro with geodatabase replication. And just as a reminder, geodatabase replication allows you to share and sync data between two geodatabases. So we are not using feature services here. And we did this to allow ArcMap replication users to start to move over to ArcGIS Pro so that they can benefit from all the new capabilities that exist in Pro. We have not moved 
the full-blown ArcMap geodatabase replication to Pro at this point. We've moved two main geoprocessing tools over. There's no enhancement to geodatabase replication in ArcGIS Pro, which means that you, you still need to use traditional version data for one-way and two-way replicas. Okay. So let's look at the features in Pro. We have the Create Replica Geoprocessing Tool, the Synchronize Changes Geoprocessing Tool, and we have added a new Replica Manager. One thing to note is that you cannot create replicas from Geodata Services in Pro. But if you do have re replicas from ArcMap that uses Geodata Services, you can still sync via these Geodata Services in Pro. We are not supporting geodatabase replication with geometric networks or cadastral fabrics because these data sets are not editable in ArcGIS Pro. We have a new replica manager, which is a card-based user experience, and it shows you all the same features that you are accustomed to in the ArcMap replica manager, just in a different form. So let's just jump into our demo to see exactly what we have in Pro. Okay, so I have a GIS Pro 2.5 here. I have two connections, two enterprise geodatabases. One is my parent and one is my child geodatabase. We access the tools the same way as you do in ArcMap. You right click on your connection, go to distributed geodatabase, and you have the create replica, synchronize changes, and the manage, cha manage replicas options here. So let's look at Create Replica. The geoprocessing tool comes up. It's the same as in ArcMap. You can actually, you can select layers from in your map or you can browse and select a different data set from in your geodatabase. Choose the type of replica, browse to your, browse to your other geodatabase. And just the same as, as the workflow in ArcMap. I'm not going to actually create a replica here. I already have a replica created that we are going to use for the demo. So let's just go and... So this map is my parent map. I have a... It's called P underscore hydrant inspection. It's using the same data that Gary used, just local copies in my enterprise geodatabases. And then I'll add my child map. That's pointing to my child geodatabase. And let me just put them side by side and then zoom into the area that I am interested in. Okay. So what we can do, I can perform some edits on the parent. So let's just grab a group of features and I'll go to the attributes and let's just make these unassigned. I apply those edits. I save my edits and let's just clear the selection so you can see that I updated these features. Now let's grab and let's go over to the child and let's do a similar thing. So I'll grab a group of features, I'll update the attributes, I'll also make those unassigned. And save my edits, clear the selection. So you can see I have two different sets of edits in the parent and the child. So now I'm ready to synchronize my edits. This is a two-way replica, so you should see each of the geodatabases receiving the edits from the other geodatabase. Now I can go to my distributed geodatabase, synchronize changes, or let's just jump into Replica Manager. So I can choose Manage Replica, and you can see my this is the replica that I have created. Now, as I said, it's a card-based experience for ArcGIS Pro Replica Manager. You can expand the card where you'll see all the general information about your replica. I have a synchronize button here, which I can actually click, and it just fills in all the information that is available for the replica. I click Run, and you should see my maps being updated with the edits from each geodatabase. Okay, so there we go. All right, let's go back to Replica Manager and look at a few things here. So I did a bit of cheating here. I actually have more replicas, but 
one of the first features you can see is that you can search for a replica. So I actually searched for my a replica with H I in it, H Y in it, so it filtered those that only that replica. But I do have a number of replicas here. You can see we have different replicas based on the icons. And you can filter by replica type, so I can choose to see only my checkout replicas, my two-way replicas, or my one-way replicas, or I can go back to see all. Now you can also expand all my, it's weird, that should have been an expand all. Yeah, I can expand all my cards, and you can see all the information for your, for your cards there. I'll collapse them again. Now we can go to login properties actually. This is where you can set where you want your replica activity log to be written to and the level, the login level for that. Similar as, same thing as in ArcMap. Now in Pro, the name, the default name of the log file is Pro Replica Activity Log. And this file is also used to log all your synchronization workflows so all your offline workflows that are taking place in pro like for example of download map from pro even those will be logged to this replica activity log okay so i think that's it for this this demo so let's just jump back into the presentation to do our a wrap up. Okay, so before the wrap up, let's just look at what's coming. So for feature services, we are plan we are currently working on supporting sync with name branch version, taking the full utility network offline and two-way collab distributed collaboration. And with respect to geodatabase replication, we are adding a new access point for the replica manager. So you'll be available via your ribbon. And we're just doing a few tweaks to the replica manager itself. Here are some links for some, some suggested links, the different sets of information that we have. We have a feature services blog link where we usually put out some blogs on tips and tricks and tricks in feature services. The rest, we have the REST API reference here. There's a nice article that tells you how to deal with offline maps and version data. There's a article for what's new in Collector for ArcGIS that was just put out there in January. And the last link is the ArcGIS Pro Geodatabase Replication Documentation. So just to review what we did, we looked at distributed workflows and feature services. We looked at distributed collaboration, taking a map offline in ArcGIS Pro, and collector for ArcGIS as it relates to map areas. And then we looked at geodatabase replication in Pro. We also had a sneak peek of what's coming. So thank you.